Today I want to take a look at a open source monitoring tool uh, called Prometheus. Uh, it's definitely been rising in popularity the past couple years. Uh, it's a project that's part of the CNCF, which is the Cloud Native Compute Foundation. That's where Kubernetes and a bunch of other stuff is hosted. Uh, and so Prometheus is definitely like a very quick and easy solution uh, that's pretty well supported everywhere to get up and running. So uh, today I'm going to show you how to uh, download, install, and set up Prometheus to uh, start scraping some metrics and statistics about all of your uh, servers and workloads. So the first thing we'll do is we will download Prometheus right from their website. And I'm going to grab this Linux version because I'm on Ubuntu. And so we'll download that. And then we will extract it. And we'll go into the directory and we will start it up. Uh, and so just like that, out of the box, Prometheus is going to uh, start listening on port 9090. It's got a default config built in, so we'll take a look at that in a bit. Uh, but we can first just look right at the dashboard. And we can see that we have our uh, Prometheus uh, query section here. This is where we can query for some statistics. Uh, and here's where we can look at our targets. Uh, so by default, the Prometheus server itself uh, will expose its own uh, set of metrics. The convention here is usually uh, the metrics can be found at a slash metrics endpoint. Um, and let's look at the, take a look at what they look like. And so we can see there's a bunch of stuff exported here, some like Go statistics because Prometheus is written in Go. So we can see like the uh, number of uh, Go routines that are running and some other mem stats about this. Some network bits and process details. Uh, so there's really a ton of different things in here. Uh, the one that we're going to play with right now is this uh, prom HTTP metric handler request total. And so this is basically every time this endpoint is hit at slash metrics, uh, this counter will increment by one. And you can see it's already done a few times since we've done it, right? So as we refresh, it will uh, continuously go up. Uh, Prometheus is uh, configured out of the box to hit this endpoint every 15 seconds and to save the results. Uh, and, and the cool thing about how all this works is anything that is exposing metrics just has to expose the metrics uh, at any given time, right? So when the request is made here, uh, it doesn't have to keep track of anything historical. It just says, hey, like here's some metrics. Prometheus server has a time series database built in that will gather all those metrics, save them, and let you do queries over time and see changes, right? And so this number will go up every time uh, we hit the endpoint. And so I'm going to copy this. And so the uh, the the default syn uh, the the syntax here is uh, it's called promql. It's uh, like Prometheus query language. Um, what we have here, the first bit is a metric name. And then in here we have a label and a label value. And that's just so we can kind of drill down deeper on some of these uh, metrics. And so I'll go back to the, the graph endpoint. And we'll just run a query for the total requests that have a code 200. And you can see the value right here. Uh, here's one of the return things. It might be a bit small for the video, but Prometheus will automatically tack on an instance and a job label. And so uh, we'll dive more into that in a second, but the instance is kind of just identifying my local Prometheus job right now. And so we can turn this into a graph. Uh, it's got a default graphing thing built in here. I can you know, drill out from the time and we can see you know, here is that query going up over time. Very cool, right? Uh, we can also, you know, ask for uh, the rate uh, over a given period of time. So, like, let's say one minute. And so, this is uh, another PromQL query, and we can see, you know, it had a kind of a sharp spike as I was hitting it, and that rate uh, of queries over one minute is coming back down to a reasonable amount. Uh, and eventually, this will balance out, you know, right at that 15 uh, second mark. And so, uh, that's pretty much the, the start, um, but we only have one server and it's only a very limited set of metrics we're exposing. And so uh, the next thing I want to show you is uh, this thing called a node exporter. And so this is what you would uh, install on all of your servers and your, your machines to get some very specific you know, machine metrics. Uh, this will include things like 
uh, disk size, uh, network traffic over time, right? So this is like bare bones stuff that you want to keep an eye on to see if the CPU spikes. And so I'm going to grab the, the download here and we'll grab it and extract it. And then we will fire it up. And so, uh, like I said, this will listen on port 9100 now uh, instead of 9090. And so we can see what that looks like from the node exporter. And you see we have a bit more. So here we have the prefix of node on a lot of these metrics. So some SOC stats, uh, network transmits, right? So this is more machine specific things, file systems in here somewhere, memory usage. And so the problem right now though is Prometheus has no idea of our uh, node exporter. So we have to change the config to tell it where it lives. And so I'm gonna close down the server real quick. We'll open up the, the config file. And so this is a bunch of stuff that's in here by default. I'm gonna delete some of it. Uh, Prometheus has a, a built-in alert manager type of thing where it can, you know, handle alerting, right? Because this is a full monitoring solution. We're not gonna look at that today. There's also an add-on that you run called the alert manager that has uh, more advanced options of like silencing alerts and you can configure routing and different stuff. So uh, I'll pull this out of the config for now. And you can see there's that 15 second scraper interval. We can change that. And we're just gonna add a new job. And so jobs are just, you know, exactly what it sounds like, um, the different types of things that will Prometheus will be scraping. So we'll name this job the node exporter job, exporter, uh, and it listens on port 9100. So if we save that and start back up the server and look at that target page again, we can see that it's picked up our node exporter and it's automatically figured out, you know, it looks for that metrics endpoint by default. And so we just have to wait for that first scrape to go off. Uh, and it did. Cool. And so if we pop back to the graph, we can look at, you know, some advanced metrics in here, like uh, file system uh, free bytes. Right, so I'll run that. And we get back a whole bunch of data, right? We can see what this looks like on a graph. So let's zoom out a bit. And, you know, we can see a bunch of different uh, labels in here. You know, I'm more interested in the, you know, mount point that has uh, the root, All right? So this will limit it down. Uh, and we can see that, you know, my, the free disk uh, on my computer right now, you know, is slowly going down tiny, tiny amounts of bytes, right? This is Prometheus saving stuff and other things happening over time, right? So, you know, obviously, yeah, obviously if we, as we zoom out, we can see that, you know, that doesn't change as much. Um, but boom, uh, just like that, we are hitting another node. And so uh, that's really the, the basics of Prometheus. Uh, we'll dive into showing some uh, metrics on a dashboard next. The uh, having one node isn't really gonna give us a lot of cool data. So I've actually, I've spun up a few other servers here that have some info in them. Uh, they're both running the node exporter. And so we'll just add these to the, the job scrape. So if I come back here and let's open up that config again. So I'm gonna add, let's see, I got this guy, 9100, and then this one also. And we can actually tell, uh, let's see, it's, I think it's like kill uh, dash sig pup to the Prometheus PID, right? So what this will do is instead of restarting that server and missing out on scrape time, uh, we can send a, a hang up signal using the kill command to Prometheus's process. And if you watch over here, it will reload that configuration file uh, and so it's kind of just like slurped in those new targets that we added without having any scraping downtime, which is pretty cool. So if we come back and refresh, we'll have some other node exporters that we added. And, you know, as soon as that one gets hit, it'll be up, right? And so uh, now we are collecting data from a few different uh, nodes. 
And so we can come back in here and you know run the queries here. Generally, what you do with Prometheus is you the server collects all the data, right, and it stores it in its time series database. Um, and then the graph here is like cool to play with and mess around with. Uh, what you really want to do is put these on a actual dashboard somewhere, right? Like a pretty dashboard where you can see lines and charts and stuff going up and down. And so uh, the most common one that folks use is a, a tool called Grafana. We're not going to get too much into Grafana, uh, but we will spin it up real quick. Um, to see what our metrics look like. And it's pretty straightforward to do. So I'm going to grab this standalone binary here, just like we did with Prometheus. And after that downloads, we're going to extract it the same way. And we'll see the answer that. And Grafana, uh, again, you'll find this in your package manager. You generally don't want to use uh, the Prometheus and Grafana versions from your package manager. They're, they're going to be a bit outdated. Uh, Prometheus node exporter changed some of the, the metric names in a recent version. So you might have you know, some mismatch and stuff around. So it's, it's best to just install from uh, the TARS if you can. There's, you know, if you use Ansible, there's like a playbook out there. Uh, and there's also like systemd files um, that are right in the, the node exporter repo. So if you want to run this as a service and um, you can just do a search for setting it up, it's pretty simple. Maybe we'll do a video on it next. But uh, I'm going to start up the Grafana server. And it's going to, you know, uh, run some migrations for its local database. And it's going to listen on port 3000. And so I'll pull that up here. And we have Grafana running. And so default password is just admin admin. I'm gonna skip changing my password. And so we need to configure a data source, which is where Grafana is gonna pull data from. Uh, I guess one of the important things to mention, Promet the, what differs about Prometheus versus some other um, monitoring tools is it focuses on a, a pull instead of push model. So Prometheus server will reach out and pull metrics from all the endpoints instead of the metrics endpoints pushing into Prometheus, right? So that, that's a bit different. Um, there's, you know, positives and negatives for both, but that's how Prometheus is configured. So I'm going to add a, a new data source to Grafana. We're going to use our Prometheus data source. And so this will let uh, Prometheus um, be queryable by Grafana to pull that time series database out and uh, use it to display some metrics. So uh, I'm going to configure the default URL. It's you know, Prometheus listing on 9090. And everything else we will just accept and test. And it works right out of the box. So that's pretty cool. And you know, we can cre uh, creating Grafana dashboards is a whole other world. So we're just going to uh, import some. They have a bunch online that you can use for free. So I'm going to let's see Prometheus node exporter. I don't remember what the numbers are. Grafana. There we go. So number uh, 6, 1860 and 405 are two pretty good ones that I've used out of the box. So we'll copy that. And we can paste it into the import. Uh, have it run. And save. And we just have to select our data source default as Prometheus. So we'll grab that one. And we'll import the second one. Which was 405. Same thing, we select the Prometheus data source. Uh, and just like that, we have some pretty cool dashboards that someone was nice enough to put together and share. So uh, let's look at this one first. And so this is an individual, um, you know, we can look at different uh, boxes on here. You know, here's my local host. You can see some of my CPU usage. Uh, and I'll show you what these queries look like. Prometheus queries definitely get really complex as you go on. Um, and the nice bit is, again, remember, you're, you're, the exporters don't have to worry about any sort of like overtime aspect. Uh, they're just focused at a moment in time. And then the uh, Prometheus server is what it handles all these complex queries, right? And a lot of this is just like aggregate functions, right? So you're counting and counting and dividing, averaging. Uh, there's another one. Let's see. Maybe it's this one. No, there's there's a bunch of functions like rate in here that are pretty cool. Some in by instance rate. So um, 
Again, this takes a bit to get used to. Out of the box, you definitely just want to pick up some easy to use dashboards that'll give you some information. And so you know, we can see uh, my machine here has 16 gigs of RAM. It's got 16 cores. And you know, we can look at the, the disk detail. You can see the file size. Up here, we can actually zoom in a bit. So let's say the last five minutes so we have a, a better looking graph. And we can also tell this to, you know, update this dashboard every five seconds or something. And so, you know, we can see some metrics as we go, file system detail, you know, it's all the stuff we were looking at. This is that space available query, you know, the, the available bytes that we looked at before. And these, um, these variables just get plugged in from up here, right? So again, we're not going too much into Grafana, but we can look at uh, another dashboard that we added. And so we can see, this one lets us see all of our nodes side by side, which is pretty neat. So I have a, you know, a, a four core server running and a one core server. Um, zoom in a bit more for some data. You know, there's our memory usage over time. Uh, one of the cool things we can do is, you know, add um, a bunch of extra files. So let's see, um, add large. No, not GitHub. Add large file. Um, create large test file. Quickly create. No, it's Windows. Um, oh, big file in it. There we go. And so here we can uh, allocate like 10 gigabytes. So I will, I'll SSH into one of these servers. And then let's create a big old file. Let's see. Let's make this like 18. And yeah, so we got a big file created. And so we should see uh, one of these metrics dip significantly when we look at uh, space available. Right, so boom, that one jumped up a ton for space used um, from when we just created that file, right? So you can you can see how, you know, you could create an alert to maybe trigger, like this is already 75% usage, right? So maybe we would want to fire an alert off, uh, you know, something's wrong, we're, we're using up all of our disk. And so uh, that's a pretty brief walkthrough of Prometheus. Um, feel free to you know check it out and start playing along. Uh, I have a local instance configured in my own network. I have a Raspberry Pi that's scraping things like my uh, my NAS box and my desktop and my laptop and some other things. Um, so we we only looked at uh, exporters today for uh, how to get data from Prometheus. Right. So there's a bunch of different types. There's, you know, plugins for like MySQL and Postgres and Nginx, and there's tons of different, um, different exporters out there. There's a link somewhere where it lists them. One of the uh, other ways to get metrics is what's called instrumentation. And so there are client libraries in here that you can use. So obviously like the Go one is a first class library where you can if you're building a, a Go web app or something, you can add a Prometheus uh, uh, exporting of metrics via instrumentation, right? So this lets you work with, let's see, look, look at the example real quick. All right, so this will uh, pull in a bunch of random metrics, but you know, you work with things like, okay, there's different data structures, right? So here's like a summary vector for Prometheus. Uh, a histogram. Count is, uh, is like obviously the easiest one. Count can only go up. It can't ever go down. Um, the cool thing with that is whenever count lowers for when it's scraped, so say it was 20 and the next scrape it's 15, uh, it's automatically going to assume that it completely reset to zero and it will show you uh, like a start fresh point. And so it's pretty powerful that way. So if you, you know, restart your boxes, the graphs will um, change accordingly. 
Uh, and, and that's really uh, the long and short of it. There's you know a bunch of open source clients out there for like Node.js and some other things. Uh, so hop on and give Prometheus a try. Um, we know we'll look at the alert manager in the future, but you know when you couple it with Grafana, you have a, a pretty awesome view into you know the things that are going on in your system.